Welcome back to episode 17 of the Two Thinking Apes. We're here with a friend of ours and the future of the NBA, Mr. Gran Antisevich. How are you, man? Oh, no, a... oh, mate. I'm so happy to be here. Thank you guys for having me. Oh, yeah. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, you can say it with a bit more fucking happiness in your voice, mate. Come uh, on. No, I'm, I'm, I'm very, very happy you guys have me. appreciate you guys. Thanks, man. <laughs> How you been? How's America Good. going? Been good, mate. Been good. Uh, can't complain. It's my going into my last year here. Um, finishing off my studies and stuff, and just getting ready for preseason. And now that things have changed a little bit with COVID, or in America at least, I won't speak for Australia, but um, with America, we're kind of back to the normal rhythm with regards to our practice and preparation stuff, which is good. So yeah. Why don't you start with for people that don't know? So what state are you in, and? Do you want to talk a bit about your transition from Australia to America? Because yeah, not many um, people would do that. Yeah, so I go to uh, Cal Berkeley, which is in the Bay Area in California. Um, and this is my last year here. Um, so obviously I went to Newington with you boys, graduating okay. in 2016. <laughs> yeah. yeah, so um, from there, just um, got recruited. Uh, some coaches saw me play in Australia and... Um, coaches over here at the school here were interested in me and started contacting me and then um after I graduated high school came over on a visit here um and then you know like the campus and then when I was deciding which school I went to decided to go here um and then moved over here uh midway through 2017 um and yeah that's about it was Berkeley the only one that gave you an offer or did you have a couple you know, under your belt uh, no, there are a few schools uh, that gave me offers. My last, my final three schools that I was deciding between were um, uh, Cal, uh, Cal Berkeley, um, Georgia Tech, which is in Atlanta, and yeah. um, and a school called Davidson, which is a school. You know, can you guys hear that pinging? Sorry, that's no, fine, bro. <laughs> a school, uh, a, a small school in um, North Carolina. So those are my. And what made you pick Berkeley? Um, just, just everything like the relationship I had with the coaches and, um, it was like a good academic place and, uh, high level of basketball. So everything put together, I thought it was just the best place for me. And as a bonus, it was on the West coast, which is one flight away from Australia as opposed to two. So that's uh, just a nice little bonus, but yeah. Fair enough. What, what's the thing that I always wondered with you is how hard the transition was because you literally like uprooted your whole life. And how much, how much training, I guess, did it take you to get there from, from, from when you were in Australia? Because I remember you were training every bloody day, like literally. Yeah. And then it's funny because you never played at lunchtime. <laughs> when, when all the like... Oh, but that's how you, that's how you players, know he was good. Yeah, <laughs> that's how you know him. You'd never play at lunchtime and then all the like the basketball players would play at lunchtime. <laughs> You're like, fuck that. <laughs> like we had probably lunchtime classes or something. I can't remember what was going on. <laughs> all lunchtime classes or whatever was happening. But um, no, nah, it, it definitely was a tougher transition than I expected to start off with. Like I think it probably took me like a full year, maybe even two years to like kind of get my stuff together. Um, I mean, the basketball transition, it's, it's basketball. So that was, you know, pretty straightforward. Um, just like, you know, obviously at an, incre at an increased intensity level, which takes a bit of getting used to, but um you know, after like a year of playing and you get used to like people are faster, stronger, bigger, bigger bodies on the court and stuff like that. So there's obviously adjustments you have to make on the court, but after about a year or two, you kind of get more comfortable and that kind of naturally progresses with more experience as you play more and train more. Um, and then the other thing is just like, you know, moving out the house at, you know, I guess at first thing is like going from living with your parents and then going by yourself, especially in another country, like, you know, you kind of realize how important it is to be organized and kind of independent in that sense. So that was another thing that kind of took me a while to uh, get used to was living on my own and like having, you know, doing stuff on my own and not wasting time and being able to manage basketball and studies and stuff like that, you know, without fluffing around too much. So it definitely is something that takes getting used to. And at first, you don't really think about it too much or don't really like, aren't really conscious of what a difference it is. But then like at a certain point, it clicked to me and I'm like, you know, I really got to, get my stuff together because it's not as easy as it was in high school so yeah are you in a dorm by yourself uh i share an apartment with one of my teammates so it's yeah. like a small like we just have one, each each have our own room so yeah that's pretty good did it did it take you a long time to find like good mates or as soon as you started the team everyone was pretty good and it was a fairly easy transition <laughs> to it for you or 
Um, yeah, in terms of that sense, it was a pretty easy transition. I mean, like with with uh, like most of the time we spend is with the team. So like that's you know the main people group of friends you have and the people you spend time with. So I don't really necessarily have a whole bunch of friends outside of the basketball team just because that's who you're around all the time and you know it's kind of like your own like your group of people on campus like you become a family with the amount of time you spend together and the coaches and, and your teammates and whatnot um and obviously it's a little different you're not as when you're going through campus and you've got classes you don't see people the same people all the time like you might have one class that's got like 400 people in it you know what i mean and then you've got another class that completely a completely different group of people in it so um yeah that's like so like i said it's like most of the time i spend it just in my teammates that's only really the people i hang out with so do you like America more than Sydney based off? Uh, no, that's, I... a tough, that's a tough question. I, I mean, Australia is unique and Sydney is obviously beautiful. I don't think you can beat it. Um, but America also does has, have things that um, make it unique as well and make it, you know, a good place to be at. So it's kind of like both of them have, um, both of them have their like certain things that they have better than the other. But every time I go back home to Sydney, I just admire how beautiful it is and, you know, how lucky I am to have grown up there. So, you know, you de- I definitely do sometimes take that for granted whenever I come back and then I, you know, walk around and see you blokes and I'm lucky how, you know, to have grown up there. So. Especially now it's harder to come back with all the COVID bullshit as well. Yeah. <clears throat> Can I yeah, I'm ask? Lucky we were able to catch up for a little bit in the summer. Yeah, I know. Like, all winter, that, more summer. Was that what already a year ago? No, no that wasn't was. Wasn't at all. No, I'm talking about this year. Yeah, I know, but what, what month was that? I don't even... Every, bro, we've been in lockdown for three and a half months. I know. How different <laughs> Everything's been so we, we, were at the, we were at the rugby function having a great time and then all... Yeah, it's great. That was... Oh, yeah, been oh, home for three months. Months. That oh. was May? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Okay. That, yeah, that, that was just before lockdown. Now yeah, we went in lockdown in June, I think. Beginning yeah. of June and hopefully October we get out of it, which has been just shit. Yeah, Did I you... Know What's the American response in terms of your state with COVID? Like, I know you're telling me you had to train with your bubble, your team bubble. And you, yeah. you told me your mate had COVID, your roommate. What happened with yeah, that? Yeah, my roommate had COVID, yeah. So he, he, had, he had COVID. So he had to, we had to, like, quarantine and stuff for a couple of weeks. Like, with the team, just kept us on, um, like, kept us vigilant. Everyone's vaccinated now. So basically, we just get tested regularly. And then no one else got it, thank God, which is good. Um, but, uh Dude. Um, yeah, like when I first came back, uh, that was when my things started to open up because I guess a lot of people, a large percentage of the population got vaccinated or whatever. So um, everything was kind of like open for a while. And then um, cases started to go up again. So basically right now, you just have to wear a mask like when you go into a shop or something like that. But there's not really any restrictions. Like if you go into a store or something like that, you need a mask. And I think if you, if you, go, if you sit down at a restaurant, you need to have proof of vaccination. But... Um, Outside of that, you can really do most things are open. Basically, you just have to wear a mask everywhere. Is basically ah, uh, that's good. You're not restricted to go anywhere. You just have to wear a mask. And like I said, if you want to go without a mask, basically you have to show proof of vaccination. So, um, uh, fuck. Well, and that'll be us in a couple the, of weeks. What's that? Yeah, but we still have four square meter rule and things like that. Like not everything will be open. You know, it's going to be like that for a while here. I reckon. Yeah. Can what was the worst lockdown was like there? Because it's all state based, isn't it? Every state's yeah. different. Yeah, every state's different. Um, the worst was probably like when it about like a month after COVID started, um, where like you, restaurants were closed. Everyone was scared. Yeah, yeah, like you couldn't get food. Every, every shops were closed. Restaurants were closed. Um, grocery stores you could only do delivery for a little bit, um, and then grocery stores opened up. Basically, everything essential was open. But like, um. There weren't like any restrictions like with you guys where you can't like travel or like you get fined if you go some like go further out than how yeah, much distance right. you're allowed and stuff like that. Um, and it's a big population, so I guess it's kind of hard for them to monitor all that. But um, the worst we had was basically just when everything was closed and you couldn't go out your house. Like and you didn't really have a reason to because like nothing was open or anything anyway. So um, that was probably like a period of time where I legit didn't see another person for because I was here by myself most of my teammates went back to their house, the ones that live in America. Um, so I was here by myself for like maybe two months. Um, barely, like didn't really see anyone else at all. So, yeah. How was that for you? Were you still, you weren't training at that time, I'm guessing? No, that, that was the end of our season. The end of our season oh, got okay. cut short, like right at the end of our season, we were in the middle of a tournament and like the, the tournament got cancelled, um, like because of COVID. So we flew back that same night and then um, 
basically everyone went home and then that was like once our season ended and then basically in two months everyone was just sitting around to wait and see what was going to happen like when when would we be able to come back to train whether we're going to be able to come back at all like were we going to have a season was school going to be online what was going on so it was kind of all up in the air and then in about that was in about that was in probably april late uh it was probably march and then maybe in like june they announced that like we would have a season that it'd be a bit shortened and then they started announcing when we'd be able to come back and train um so that was about like middle of the year they started doing that stuff and then i think everyone was back like our team was back by about august but even then we couldn't like train with each other we had to train outdoors and stuff like that so there were a lot of restrictions even at that point what was it like two months you go uh you're on a roll here (laughs) what was was two months like by yourself that's what Um, i was gonna ask as well yeah yeah it was it was boring i mean i had school still to keep me kind of busy like because the semester was still going they just made everything online for the rest of the semester Mm. but it was kind of just weird because like berkeley is like a college town there's a lot of students here so usually when you go for a walk or something there's a lot of people around it's busy but like you go around it's just like absolutely no one anywhere it was kind of just weird you know what i mean um i didn't go it didn't go out of my house that much to be honest just because like i didn't have reason to and couldn't train i couldn't go to the stores and stuff so it's like you know you're just gonna stay home and like order food in from any place that is open or whatever's going on so it was kind of crazy it passed quickly but at the same time it moved really slow um and you're just waiting to hear from like the school to tell us what's going to happen or what's going on um and like i was thinking about coming home during that period of time but then they were talking about like not letting people in from other like not letting international students in because of the covid stuff so I was going to end up coming home and a couple of my mates who play basketball over here did come home. Um, but I just thought it was kind of risky. So I ended up staying here. Um, but which was kind of tough to know, like that I couldn't go home after going home every year and not being able to go home last year was kind of uh, crappy, but um, yeah. You came out the other end. That's like yeah. the three months we've been locked out for like three months and there was a solid two, <clears throat> two and a half months where I was just at home with mom and dad because my sister yeah. was at her boyfriend's and I wasn't seeing anyone because they were scared and it fucking yeah. sucked. Like for the first couple of weeks, I'm like getting a routine, getting the routine. And because yeah. uni wasn't on as well, my mental state was like fucking so shit because I don't know, it's just <laughs> yeah. like a, such a struggle. How were you no, like 100%. mentally with all that stuff? 100%. Yeah, well, the thing was like, I didn't even have anyone to see you because everyone like had gone home. That's what I mean? mean. So it was just like, I was literally just by myself and like one of my teammates came back a little bit earlier um, and he was just like living in Berkeley. So for him, for like the first month I wasn't with no one at all. And then the second month, like I was with him a little bit, like just hanging out with him occasionally. But um, you just yeah, it was, it was crazy at first. Yeah, it was like, I think, I think in America, like the panic or not some the, the panic, but like the paranoia or like fear of but meeting with other people didn't really set in at first. I think like for the first month and a half, people were just like, oh yeah, you know, it's just going to pass. It'll be a month of lockdowns and then a month or two of lockdowns. And then after that, we'll be back to normal. But then I think after like the first month and the, in the middle of the second month, once they started talking about like the risks of it and you have to wear a mask and talking about how long it was going to go for, that's when people started to like, you know, be scared to like go out and meet with other people. So, yeah. Yeah. Fuck. What was your roommate's uh, conditions like when he had COVID? Because I don't know um, anyone. Do you know anyone, Costa, that's had COVID? Yeah, couple of people but like apparently if you're vaccinated you you're fine and then yeah he didn't he didn't really have any, yeah he didn't really have any symptoms he had like a mild fever for a day and like some body aches for a day and then after that he was fine so did he only find out from like all the mandatory testing or did he just get himself tested oh uh, he got himself tested because he felt a little off and then yeah now in terms of you don't know if it's a flu you don't know if it's a flu or covid or it's just all the same especially when yeah. you're or you're just being a hypochondriac <laughs> yeah how how does the actual team structure work like how many people are in your team how many are international as well um yeah so we have um we have uh let me think one we have one two we have six international seven international guys so we have a lot of international blokes well, does UK usually team? have more what's that does uk usually have a decent percentage of internationals um it kind of pe- depends comparison. like historically yeah we have had a, a few but like now we have a lot like we have a lot more than what other teams would have like seven international guys is a lot um we have i mean i'm from australia we have another bloke from australia 
one guy from Ireland, two Canadians, a Greek bloke, and a guy from Germany. So, a lot And how big's the team? Uh, 15 total. 15. Yeah. I think 15. Oh, wow. 15. That's a lot, actually. Seven. Yeah. That's nearly half. Yeah. So. So. The Greek, is the Greek bloke a good guy? <laughs> yeah, he's a good guy. <laughs> yeah. And does that 15 Beautiful. stay? Like, do people get cut? Um, yeah, the 15 stays, yeah. Yeah. So oh, it's okay. like like guys on scholarship each year, we have a certain amount of guys every year. So um yeah. It's the same it, same guys every year. And is it true you're not allowed to get paid because you're college and that's like the bullshit laws or something like that? Yeah. I remember re- seeing it somewhere. Yeah, well, um actually they they before that we couldn't like make money. There's like this thing like we couldn't make money off of our name and stuff like that. It's called name, image and likeness. But um now because um because uh what was i gonna say because they have this new thing now called um nil which i don't know what it stands for no it's name image and likeness so basically now like student athletes can profit off of their like if they want to make money doing something they can like if a um like a brand comes up to them and says oh, oh like do you want to be a ambassador for our brand or like we'll sponsor you and we'll pay you to like put up an instagram post saying like wearing our shirt or something like that basically yeah. they've made it possible for like student athletes to make money off of things like that so um there have been cool. a couple i think there's like some football player i can't remember where he's from like ohio state i think it might be he signed a, a nli nil is the name of like the thing for two million dollars oh fuck. have you gotten any deals it's pretty handy um i i haven't but the thing is they you can't do it if you're an international student because like uh... it violates like the visa rules because like if you're, not, if you're on a student visa, then like if you're making money, it's like you're working kind of. I guess I don't know what. Yeah. The, okay. I don't know what the uh, logistics are behind that, but yeah. That's pretty cool. That's some good pocket money. Yeah. So <laughs> I mean, he's he's like he's there's no I don't think there's I be, there's barely anyone else making that that much amount of money. Like most people might do stuff for like a hundred bucks or a couple hundred bucks. You know what I mean? Like not a lot of yeah, money. Yeah. Still, but it's it's just an Insta an anom- post or something. He's an anomaly to be making. Um, <laughs> two million bucks but um but yeah it is it is good i guess that people can do that now so so how does it work when, when you're done so at the end of the year like do you get uh do you get drafted if you get drafted and then okay, you're, you're, gonna, you're, to gonna, you're gonna declare you're gonna declare obviously or yeah yeah well but the like the way it's kind of like a complicated process the way it works is like um basically after you graduate you have like um you basically work out like you just train once you're done, once you graduate college. And then like, Fuck, what the, in, the, in the case of the NBA, like um, teams might like have you in for a workout where they bring you in and you train with them, or they might bring a couple like guys they're looking at at the same time. And then you like train with each other. And this is another way for them to analyze you. So like basically during that, like three month period between when you graduate, which is in uh, May and when the draft happens, which I think is October, um, basically uh is it no it might be a bit sooner than october it's usually october but this year i think it was a different time anyway like about august october um but uh basically they just like teams are just evaluating who you who they want to pick during that period of time so like looking at a bunch of different players and stuff like that so it's kind of a sporadic and all over the place process basically um but yeah you're basically just training for months preparing to play pro so fuck that's so cool yeah. Do they call you like heaps at all? Like towards the end of your college, do they call you and say, "Oh, we want to have a look at you come for a workout or something"? Or uh, like... I wish, but I wish, but no, it doesn't. <laughs> I wish, but no, it doesn't work. I, the, there's like strict rules between like um, college athletes not being able to like talk to professional teams or talk to agents and stuff like that. So, like all that stuff kind of happens, um, happens once you once you graduate. Doesn't NFL isn't NFL different or is that? I swear, like, mate, that's not his expertise. Coaches, no, I know, but I swear, because people, like, coaches would go to someone's house, or is that, oh, it's maybe for college more so than the actual NFL? I'm not sure. Yeah, I know, like, like I, I don't know about the NFL. I know, like, with college recruiting, like, coaches will go, like, do house visits. Yeah, I think that's what I'm thinking. Like that. uh, yeah. I've seen that in movies. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, so, yeah. How would your visa stuff work then? If you get drafted, um, when you get drafted. <laughs> Thanks, mate. Honestly, I have no idea how things are going to pan out. I'll sort it out for you anyway. <laughs> I have no idea how things are going to pan out once I graduate college. Um, well, you got uh, your psych like, degree. How's that going? I got my, I got my, my psych degree is going well. Yeah, it's going well. So I've, I've like, would you uh, do that? 
Uh, or is it well, basketball? When I'm, well, my goal is to play professionally after I graduate and obviously of like course, being yeah. at the highest level. So that's, you know, you got to aim yeah. for the highest level. Um, so, yeah, but my goal is to play professionally. And then after I'm done playing um, basketball, I, I've kind of thought about what I want to do, but I figured like some, I'd want to stay involved in the game of basketball in some way. And like, obviously there's lots of different ways you can do that, like coaching or there's other different jobs you can do. But I think like most likely once I'm done playing, I'd want to stay involved in the game of basketball. Like that's what I love to do. So um, yeah. It's crazy, man, because like I've known you for a long time and you've always, basketball's like always been like at your core almost. And it's never <laughs> like, no, honestly. And it's never like, you've never gotten bored of it. It seems. At least, yeah. From, I, like, talking yeah, about yeah, with you. Yeah, well, I'm, I'm just, I'm very lucky that I found like what I'm passionate about in life. You know what I mean? And when that, did you start basketball? Um, first started playing when I was six, so it's been a while. Yeah, fucking hell, been playing, been playing for a while. <laughs> um, I just become like a um counselor at an organization, or like a you could go to and become part of an organization that's like a suit after you play. Worst yeah case. yeah a what? yeah Basically. well i mean the kind of the reason i did psychology was because um it, like i feel like it's a broad degree so you don't really pigeonhole yourself so like whatever i wanted to do afterwards like whether it's basketball related or if it happens to not be basketball related or whatever like having a psychology degree would be like a good a good thing mm-hmm. to have you know so that that was my kind of thing going into it is like saying i'm not necessarily sure about what it is that i want to do so like at least if i do that that's not going to pigeonhole me you know in that sense mm-hmm. Once, you, yeah, once you the first goals ticked off anyway, that'll open more opportunities. <laughs> you know what I mean? Just, just come to construction, bro. <laughs> yeah, no, I don't know if I'd be as, as good as it as you are, mate. You're over there killing it. I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> you're killing it, mate. Oh fuck! This guy's mate. a bit of a workhorse as well, bro. I know he's no, he's, he's a bit of a workhorse, no. you know. He's a workhorse. You're inspiring. No, me. oh, this is bad. Oh, you're a workhorse. Massively. Come on now, don't be modest. He's the I'm biggest win boss. Shut up. I'm just an Instagram model that sleeps all day and campers myself. Uh, you're bald. Yeah, exactly. Cucumbers on the eyes. Face yeah, 100%. mask. The best. Beautiful. But yeah. Boy, boy, the only thing I, every time I think of you, Grant, it's the it's that It's image. a lot. He thinks of you a lot. No, oh, a yeah, lot. All the time. That <laughs> image that... I remember you came back like a couple of years ago and went to the pub. And oh, Pete... <laughs> Pete was Pete keeps bringing it up when I when, when we talk. And he's like, I just remember Grant came up to me. He's like, Costin's there, just going, Whoa, where the ship is at? We're like two bundies. That's all I think about the whole time. Mate, I remember we were there. And you brought about four rum and cokes to the table, and everyone else already had a drink. And you said, No, everyone else got one or more for me. <laughs> he had about four. Of them. <laughs> he had about four of them sitting in front of you, and I couldn't stop laughing. The construction industry, mate. It doesn't. It's the <laughs> industry. I'm going, yeah. I'm going heaps well. Yeah, no, it's not my fault. <laughs> no, made for it. Oh, That's funny. oh god! I'm gonna go cry it. after this. Nah, wow. oi, Costa's lost a lot of weight, mate. He's looking good. No, Grant said. didn't see me fat. Oh, he was fat for a bit, but he's lo- he locked down shred. He's killing That's it now. It's not it. That's not That's shredded it. just yet. No, nah, but it's coming. Long. What? Yeah. <laughs> what? <laughs> What's the training like for you every day, anyway? <laughs> uh, yeah, basically, so we have like um, we have like team practice every day, um, which usually goes for about two hours, um, and then we usually like lift weights after that. Um, during season, yeah. it's kind of like it's kind of like three, three, or four, three times a week usually for during season, but then like during the off season. Um, it's like less team training, more like individual work. So you go and like work on your, like work on your game, shooting, ball handling, passing, that type of stuff. And then you do more weights in the off season. Um, and then like basically the closer, you, the closer you get to the season, the like less individual stuff you do, more team stuff. And then like during season, basically we just train like every day, um, like team practice, like I said, for about like two hours usually, or like it depends, but like anywhere from one to two and a half hours and then weights and then depending on how we're playing games we kind of like structure it differently and you know but that's basically how it goes is there a lot of mental training at all what's that mental training yeah 
Uh, not really. No, not, not, not that much mental training. We have like some res- like resources at the school that we can use, but like with the team, there's not really much mental training that we do. And do you guys have to be put on a diet during season? Or uh, yeah, we, we, we're usually on a diet. I mean, like that we can eat what we want, but like we, we have like a, um, our strength coach like gives us a diet of like, or goals. Like some people need to like gain weight or some people need to lose weight. Like you have like a, weight goal for each person um what's yours um mine's two two twenty two hundred twenty five 225 pounds which i think is like just over 100 kilos about, mate you've caught in the pound this. system now about this, something like well yeah what can i do this <laughs> yeah, so, you know, when we go to the when we go to the the weight room and we're stacking up weights it's all in pounds so i can't help it <laughs> there's no 20 kilo <laughs> weight it's 45 pounds 225 is 100, I'm pretty sure. But that's funny because you're heaps tall and I'm like a short. He's a short 100. I, I, was 105, I was 105 kilos like three months ago. That's power, mate. Power gut. It was How tall are you now, Brian, anyway? It was a power gut. Um, last time I measured myself, I was 6'8", but that was about... That was in high school and I haven't measured myself since then. So I might have grown a little bit. That'd be nice. Yeah, I'm telling you, bro, from seeing you, you've grown. Every I think time I have I a see, little, I re- I think I have there's, little a, bit. there's a photo, I think, in year six where I'm taller than you. I think. No, for sure. I think you were definitely taller than me. Like I was seven, in year six. Like yeah. And, I'm like, and then like every year, just like... Stop, stop. <laughs> <laughs> I was I'm pretty sure. In, I was small as in year seven. Pretty sure Kayla said I got taller yesterday, so I might be on you know the five eleven sort of zone now. Maybe there you go. No, nah, it's because you lost weight. You look push, everything's push like streamlined. You're six, foot. You, you're six foot. No one needs to know. You just I actually bought, just I in actually his construction bought, boots all day. I actually Everyone bought bumped, a pair of shoes this morning. There you Fine. go. Everyone bumps it up six foot. You don't need to worry about it. Yeah, don't worry. <sighs> so, how's like? Do you party a lot? <laughs> Like what's the American? <laughs> what's the American scene like? Scene you're, like? It's like you're trying to treat a chick. Like, do you like maybe like party a lot? Like, I don't know. Like, do maybe I can come to a party. Just went on with you guys, mate. Just nah. Right. nah uh, no, what's the scene like? Um, I mean, I don't really, I don't really go out a whole lot. Like, I really barely yeah, go basketball. out. Basketball. Um, yeah, like I, I don't really do. I, I basically just spend my weekends at home, to be honest. Um, but like they have it. Driven. Like on campus and stuff, they have like fraternities. They have like uh, I remember you not, that, that, not that many fraternities, but a couple, and they like have um, like parties and stuff occasionally and stuff. Or like before a football game, they'll have like a thing called a tailgate, where basically like people show up and they like just drink and cook bar- cook barbecues and stuff outside the stadium before the game starts and stuff like that. Very American stuff. Yeah, so that's the tailgate is very American. Yeah, Barbie on the back of the Ute. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, that's pretty cool. The best. Yeah, they love it. So, yeah. What about the girls, mate? <laughs> mate, basketball's the game. Basketball's the game. That's it. He said it. <laughs> <laughs> They'll have him when he's up on Hall of Fame. Oh well, I don't know about that. Mate, you put a lot of pressure on this bloke. <laughs> Gee. All right, sorry, bro. No, you now you have to because then we can reshare this podcast and be like, oh yeah, this guy's now Hall of Famer, and then we'll get more traction. You know what I mean? That sounds like a good plan. Bro, right? like, at least <laughs> that's at least if max like minimum fifteen years away. Nah, when this do you won't graduate be gone. anyway. Next year, end of next year. Yeah, I graduate um, spring, uh, April, May of next year. That's when we have a. Because our, our school years flipped compared to Australian. Uh, yeah, because summer's different, hey? Yeah, it's so weird to me every time I think about that, like the fact that they have the summer break in the middle of the year and then they have study from like um, from like August to basically May. It's kind of weird when I think about it. Yeah. Not so having like do you a guys get... over Christmas is kind of like yeah. weird. So you, is it just like two weeks off during Christmas and New Year or something? Um, well, during during Christmas, we're like in our season, so we usually get about like maybe five days off, six days off. Depends on yeah. depends on if you're playing games like right around Christmas time, you might get like a le- couple less days off, or if you're not playing games, you might get like close to a week. So it kind of just depends. Um, obviously, like school, it's also the fact that we're in season during that time because I guess kids that are in like regular student like students just go home that don't, or other people that don't have sport at that time they go home over christmas for like about a month and a half so i suppose like from their perspective they do get the break over christmas but um because yeah. we're playing games it's kind of weird like not you're you putting know, in the work mate 
Yeah, and obviously having Christmas in winter is weird compared to having Christmas yeah. in summer. Well, it's more natural, I guess. From it, I mean, it is it is kind of how they think about Christmas usually, yeah. like the winter and stuff. But I don't know. It's just we've I've always grown up with it in the in the summer, so it's just like that's what we're used to, you know. It's, it doesn't uh, snow over in California, does it? No, no, not where I'm at, at least. But in California, I don't think it snows in many places. But in here, it doesn't get honestly in in Berkeley, it doesn't get much colder than like Sydney in the winter. Maybe, maybe not even that cold. Um, but yeah, then in the summer, it's not as, it's nowhere near as hot. So, um, ah, that's interesting. Yeah. It's it, it, both in the, Yeah. Like the Bay Area where I'm at, it's like cl- right on the Pacific Ocean. So there's like a lot of times it's kind of windy and cold. Like San Francisco is freezing, like basically all year round. So, um, yeah. Have you seen much I, of America? Um, Yes and no. I mean, like when we travel and play for like travel for games, we don't really see much. You're like you just at the hotel most of the time. Yeah, um, okay. you might go out for a little bit, but not this, like not really. Um, not that much. Um, uh, I'm trying to think. The only place we we played in New York, which was pretty cool, and even though we didn't really do much there, it was just cool to like be in New York. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, like you just see a little bit of stuff, like driving around, you walk around a little bit, see see a few things, but. Um, I've been to a fair few states, like just mostly because of games, pretty much. Um, so pretty yeah. Cool. One of my goals is to buy a ranch in Tennessee when I'm older and <laughs> oh, like no. work the ranch. Like, do you think that's achievable? Have you been to Tennessee? Am I going to get like fucking shot in the head or <laughs> like? <laughs> I've not been to Tennessee, but I love the plan. Go for it, mate. <laughs> if you buy a ranch, hey. I'm coming. Oh, 100 percent. Everyone can come. It's going to be hundred percent. Meantime, I'll have a massive yeah. ute, few assault rifles. Everything revolves yeah, around him drinking. The ranch <laughs> will involve a ranch drinking. Yeah, that's the best. The rocking chair on the front of the porch, Bundy in hand. Actually, they want to have Bundy over there. I have to bring some bring Is some Bundy supplies. an Aussie thing? Yeah. Uh, oh, yeah. Didn't even know I think that. so. Yeah, it is. I'm, Not yeah. The, the, from what I know. Yeah, Grant doesn't touch the shit, mate. Basketball. <laughs> Good. No, no, he's very, very healthy guy. Good, like, like, like me. Yeah, very healthy, like you. Can I, when, when was, what I want to know from you is like, when did you realize you want to do basketball? Was it always a thing because you always enjoyed it, or was there a moment where it stopped from being just like a hobby to like I'm gonna try and chase this as a career? Um. I think I think probably like when I first started playing basketball, like I I really loved it and like I enjoyed it, um, and I knew right away when I started how much I enjoyed it. But I think like probably honestly not long after I started playing, even though I was young, like I knew that's what I wanted to do. Like yeah. I, I obviously did other stuff for a while, and then it like well, I stop I basically stopped doing everything else like and playing other sports when I was probably like fourteen. Like so basically yeah. stopped playing everything else when I was about fourteen or something around there. Um, but like, even from when I was young, I knew like that basketball was what I wanted to do. Like, even though I was playing other sports here and there, um, like basketball was always, always the goal. And I knew I wanted to like play basketball and do that for a living. Um, and I've all, I always dreamt of coming to college and playing college basketball when I was young. So, um, yeah, for me, like when I first started playing really, I just realized like how much I enjoyed it, how much I loved it. And I always knew kind of like, that's what I wanted to do. So that's why I say I'm very lucky in that sense that like I found, you found it early as well and you're achieving really it, idea, like what i what i was passionate about and what i love to do in life and like i could i could uh i could do that so yeah do you keep in contact with any of the guys it's like you're reading my mind point? i'm like i was about to ask that <laughs> yeah <laughs> like Wait, with the same person yeah i do no, yeah i do we're yeah. Not. <laughs> <laughs> yeah i do i keep i keep in touch with a lot of them um I came back when I went back this, usually when I, when I come back to Sydney, um, like everyone kind of comes back at the same time. Cause we all like all the guys that are here now that I played with, like, um, like, uh, McQuitch, uh, his younger brother, Matur, uh, Reed, Reed Nottage, um, a bunch of other guys who like played a- ahead of me, like who were older than me. A lot of them usually come back to Newington, like in the winter time. And during that break we have, and especially the guys that were in college, like while I was here in my unit, you know, a few years below at Newington, um, we usually always come back and then we like train together and we see each other around that period of time. But because of COVID really, I haven't seen most of them in about a year or two. Um, and even some of the boys from 
Newington who play there now who are like younger than us that I know. Um, I usually see them, but like I said, because of COVID and stuff, it was all a bit disrupted. I didn't get that chance. But um, I still speak to McQuesh pretty often. Um, he's playing professionally right now in Europe. Um, uh, Reed, I actually played against Reed. Um, oh, really? Two years ago, yeah. So he he came. He, we played against us at our home. Um, so that was pretty cool. And then I hung out with him after. So that was like pretty cool to you know go from playing with each other in high school to playing on the you know sharing the court, playing against each other in college. That was a pretty cool moment. That's very cool. Um, but I, I I keep in touch with most of them. Yeah. So they're all doing well, and you know the guys that are over here playing are doing a great job. So yeah. Do you know where McQuetch is playing? Uh, in Finland, I think. In Finland. Oh, I actually wow. supposed to call him recently, but I haven't been in touch with him as much as I should have. But um yeah, he just moved he just started playing there about a month month or so ago. So yeah. that's pretty cool. Wasn't he at New Mexico? Yeah, he was in New Mexico, yeah. Yeah. Did yeah, he finish his good. studies or did he He's New Mexico yeah, he, in yeah, America? He, he graduated. Yeah, he stayed, he stayed the whole four years. So he he graduated. Um it's funny because one of my assistant coaches now actually coached him at New Mexico too. He was his assistant, an assistant coach at Mexico when McQuitch was there. So that's funny. I feel like in in the black basketball bubble, once you reach that kind of college level, is there, would you kind of know everyone or know of everyone? Because not many people get to that level or is the college level still kind of like a big basket of people? Are you talking about like other players like in college or just Australians? Kind of both. Yeah, I mean, like, I, you really don't know most people because it's like, for Division One, there's like 300, I think it's 330 Division One schools or something like that. And like 15 in each, so it'll add up. Yeah, so there's like, there's like, so there's a, a, a thousands of players at college. So, oh, like, okay, very yeah. rarely do you, like, obviously, in my conference, there's 12 teams, including us. So, like, and a lot of the guys who've stayed the whole four years, like, were the same, started college the same mm. year as me on other teams, like, you play against them and you kind of like know who they are because you see them like you play against each team twice a year. So, you know, you kind of get sort of familiar with them, not necessarily in a friendly sense, but, <laughs> you know, just in the sense of, you know, who they are. Um, and then like all the te- teams you play against, like you scout them. So, you know, each like you know, before you play a game, you like scout the opposition. So you, you memorize film sessions. Yes. It's film sessions and stuff like that. So you get to, you, like know people through that sense. Um, but like pe- teams like from other conferences really, you don't really interact with them a whole lot because preseason you play maybe like 10, 12 preseason games before your conference season starts. Um, and a lot of the times you play teams that are like close to you. So like we play a lot of teams in California for our preseason conference and California has a lot of teams. So um, uh, like okay. just, in the, just in our area, in a Bay area, like you have San Francisco, St. Mary's, um, us, Stanford. So you like a couple of UC schools. So there's a lot of teams like just in our area. So a lot of times, like in the preseason, you play teams only that are like close to you. So you really don't even like play teams that are on like different conferences on the East Coast and stuff like that. So, um, yeah, so you wouldn't, don't really know much. With regards to Australians, you kind of do because there's not as many of them here, obviously. And a lot of the guys who went to America in my year, like for our year group when we graduated in year 12, like a lot of them might either played against at some point or played with, like especially guys in Sydney. So a lot of those blokes I do know from Australia, um, guys like in my year, the year above me, the year below me. But in yeah. terms of that, generally speaking, like I said, you don't really like have much to do with other teams. So um, you get familiar with teams that are like in your conference, but other than that, not really. And it's kind of just all about bonding with your own team, I guess, to get that like team chemistry. Is that yeah, kind of right? Yeah. 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 Well, it's like we spend so much time together. So, you know, that's yeah, you kind of have to like each other. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, I, I have a bunch of you know really good blokes on my team, a bunch of great guys, and um, you know we spend so much time together, eat together, train together. You know, in the morning, in the afternoon, you live live right ne- next door to each other, so um, you spend a lot of time together. Yeah, it's interesting. On campus, you'd be like the the basketball cult, like the fifteen <laughs> of you, because you're all like so tall and you all just hang out with each other. <laughs> Yeah, or kind of, yeah, kind of. But that's what I mean, like, you know, when, when uh, you asked me before, like, do I meet a lot of people on campus and stuff like that? Um, but like like I said, it's like we spend so much time together and obviously we're on the same team, so we become great friends. And it's like, that's mostly who you hang out with, you know, just because you're spending that much time together. So it is kind of like a they, they sometimes call it like a basketball fraternity. Like if you're on a sports team, like that's your kind of frat type of thing, you know? So It would be, that makes sense. Yeah, that's how it is, so... Gamma on the side. <laughs> the what? What'd you say? I just said, random, I just said random, just said random Greek letters because that's what oh, for, the, for the frat. 
That's what you yeah, want to do. Cool guy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Grease, mate. Blue shirt. What? Grease, mate. Center of the world. <laughs> see, yeah, he see was. Boy, you see your boy Giannis won the won the championship this year. I, I did, I did. I go for the Grizzlies though, so I didn't really care. Oh, you but... go for the Grizzlies? <laughs> yeah, mate. Yeah. They actually this last year and the year before even was alright. But... Mate, you're a Tennessee man. Going for Memphis? <laughs> no, no. Well, I I go for. I go for Tampa Bay in the NFL, and before you used to call me bandwagon, I went for them about eight years ago, and that oh, paid dividends. Yeah. So now I'm waiting for Memphis to do something of of significance Mate, in the NBA. Speaking about supporting teams, how do you like the bunnies? Oh, you no, you're the, the what? Bunnies, no, 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 no. Get that up, yeah. How do you like that, mate? <laughs> I don't like that because all you guys, the fans of the bunnies, are just. I'm just gonna be. Like, I just really don't want you guys to win the grand final. To be honest, it's gonna be oh, hearing about on. it for the next 300 years. Mate, we're winning that thing. Wayne Bennett's taking us all the way. <laughs> I was hoping we'd get through this without mentioning them, but that's all right. <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, it was inevitable. I'm not gonna see. I'm not gonna see your face and then not mention the bunnies, especially you know with the grand final coming up. Come on, mate. That was inevitable. They they did play extremely well. Honestly, I do think they can beat Penrith, but yeah, I don't know, man. I sort of Penrith haven't won one in eight a long time, so I go for the Dragons. They're shit, so I'm like it's just it's just did, depressing. Did you, watch the game last, did you watch the game last night? That was crazy. Yeah, fantastic game, fantastic. Man, game. What but, was Melbourne doing? Man, Melbourne just coughed it up. It was like the worst game they played all year because I thought there's no way Melbourne aren't winning the grand final this year with some of the, oh, like, yeah. the way they've been playing and then they bad. completely bottled it. It was bad. The amount of errors they had dropped balls and stuff, it was ridiculous. Yeah. We'll see. The Bunnies Bunnies definitely have a very strong chance of winning. Don't the really want to... Red and, really red and green, mate. Who's in no, the finals still... right now? The bun- Is it the finals already set? I don't yeah, follow no, that. I've got no <laughs> idea. I'm like 10 it's kilometers behind you guys. Rabbits and the Panthers. Uh, okay. I was the opposite you're the one that's got to tell. I was I was excited to tell to tell you to talk about the rabbits today, and I honestly would have forgotten unless we were talking about unless you brought up your support of the Buccaneers. Wow, well, it's my head all Then I got no. I don't to blame want to say myself. you brought it upon yourself, but I brought it upon myself. It's fine. It's all right. <laughs> No, it'll be, that'll be a very good game. I'm actually glad Melbourne aren't in a grand final because it's like they're always in it and just like move away for someone else that hasn't been in one for a while. So I'm. I thought the Roosters. All I'm were supporting. No. Nah, all I'm nah. supporting is a good. I'm just supporting a good I game of footy. Right. That's fair enough. Oh, so wholesome, Costa, hey? As long as it's a good game of footy, I'm a winner. That's all I care about. There you go. Hey, the only spot I follow is UFC. You follow I UFC? Know. Yeah, bro. So good. You, big card on tonight? today. Are you watching yeah, tonight? Well, it's on. It's yeah. It's our Sunday days. I'm gonna watch it after this. Whenever the main card starts, I think it starts Saturday. Yeah. Saturday, yeah. Yeah, it starts Involved. in an hour. I think here. Have you been? Do you follow Grant? Um, I do kind of, sort of. My a lot. Some of my teammates like watching. So anytime they watch, like they watch fighting, like you they like watch boxing, and UFC. So a lot of times when they watch, I watch. But I stopped watching because every time I watch, the guy that I want to win always loses. So <laughs> yeah. I kind of do you know? Do you know the Volkanovski's fighting Ortega? Do you know who they are? Who do you reckon? Yeah, no, win yeah, 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 yeah. I follow. Yeah. Who's gonna so, win? So let's see if I you've got a curse in your pick. You gotta go for Volkanovski. He's Aussie. Yeah, of course, of course. I don't. Hey, reckon, I reckon it's gonna golf. be a day of upsets tonight. You think Ortega's gonna win? I think Ortega's gonna win. I think. Wow. Hook is gonna lose the other guy that's New Zealand. He's in the. He's gonna fight probably in the next half an hour because he's on the Hook prelim is, card. Hook is good. Yeah, I know. I like Hook. I just feel like it's gonna be an upset. I don't know why. You can hold me to that in an hour, but we'll see. We'll see. We'll see. we'll see. we'll see how it is in an hour. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. I the only other... UFC. Yeah. I yeah. UFC where I'm a... The only way I ever watch UFC with Taylor or Hodges is if Hodges is like, I've got a table for you guys at the pub and then I'll go. Hey, everything he does revolves around drinking. It's like Taylor asked me yesterday, like, oh, do you want to like, maybe like join our, our stream like, and like watch UFC like... with us? And I'm like, nah, man. Like, nah. We're not going to a pub. There's no point watching it. And he's right. Like, if you don't have a good meal in front of you and you have a couple of Bundys or like... He doesn't like the sport. Sorry? Hey. 
I said, have a good old cheeky sh chicken shitty in front of you, mate. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Maybe even a loaded chicken shitty. Hodges Pub does this heart attack thing that cost them devours where it's the schnitty and then they put like meat on top of it then shit like it's fucking disgusting <laughs> <laughs> no i'm sure in america that have all that shitty food that's just fucking cholesterol surely <laughs> just just cholesterol just cholesterol in the it is. <laughs> just diabetes Mate, when i went to america years ago oh, i don't want to the imagine best part you did there no well i was with my family so it was very tame what obviously. you ate Oh, the best. I'd walk out and for breakfast, I'd have a like massive slice of pepperoni pizza like the size of my head. <laughs> Oil would like drip down. Oh, I'd like use a shot. Oh, the best. Honestly, very happy guy. Good, sure. love very it, happy guy. But I love it. But yeah, I couldn't, I couldn't do anything because I was still, uh, how old? I was like 14. What are you going to do, bro? You're all tall. You're going to do nothing. <laughs> wow. Wow, bro. Way to out me in front of all my friends. Yeah. No, mate, like, come on, cost is a real deal. Cost is a real one, hey? You've already had the ramen food for the whole table. So no worries. Standard. <laughs> Standard. That was actually so He bought I'm, KFC I'm for so us. That Pete, that Pete even mentions that. No, Pete's memory's fucked. Pete's... Like, he's he's just just remembers everything. It's you know, you, know, you know, I came across a funny photo from the rugby lunch the other day. I can't, the people, no one can see if I show you, but <laughs> who's saying on it was this thing here? <laughs> can, if I show you guys, can you see this? Yeah, put it on the screen yeah. to be able to see it. Oh, you weren't in this. Remember this photo with Pete taking it? <laughs> 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 this he is looks. The best, this is one of the best photos I have in my phone. Just unbelievable. <laughs> he looks like he can pull his face so he looks like 12 and innocent, and then he yeah. can also look like 60 and a pedophile. <laughs> 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 He's got that big head where it's either or. Very big head. Very big head. Strange. It's enormous. It's enormous. Pete yeah. listens to this podcast just to give a shit for it. Yeah. Does he really? Yeah. He's a great guy. <laughs> nah, He's the biggest Chris. Yeah. That's good. That's Grant good. and Baz will be guaranteed listeners now. I mean, not Grant. Yeah. Um, Pete. Yeah, Pete. Grant too, right? Yeah, <laughs> no, much. I think Pete and Baz because Grant's on it. This is... <laughs> Well, if Baz is listening, I'm going to tell him that the Roosters suck. That's for you, Baz. <laughs> well, we had we had BK on like a few weeks ago, and he, yeah, straight yeah, up, yeah. first thing he says is, "Yeah, AB just bowls pies." And then AB messages me like two days later, he's like, "Apparently, I bowl pies, eh?" I'm like, "Yeah, look, he didn't hold back." <laughs> What's, oh, no, I'm not going to get on AB then if he's already gone on to for no, previous bro. podcast. No, get on him, mate. He's dodgy. Yeah, he's, he's gonna he's hunt you down now. <laughs> if you talk shit about I'll, I'll, wait, I'll wait to hear a message. He's got nothing to say though. This chook sucked this year, so what's he gonna say? <laughs> yeah, he's got he does have nothing. His NFL fantasy team also sucks big balls. And he has, McCa <laughs> he has McCaffrey and McCaffrey got injured as well, so fuck you, AB. <laughs> That's rough. No. Yeah, fuck you, AB. <laughs> <laughs> Just jump on. Yeah, fuck Brighton. We love you, AB. <laughs> <laughs> oh poor kid I'm going to get so many steak emails about financing yeah. my money and yeah. investing in stocks <laughs> <laughs> oh fuck you put him through the ring it today oh, yeah I feel bad for him it was, it was it was casual and then he just it just got violent it was, just so <laughs> it was casual <laughs> it was, I don't know I, I just told you it was relaxed it's like, it's like <laughs> someone lit a, someone said AV it's like a <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's no, so he, honestly, honestly, I got pent up anger because he released his because he has a um thing where he does odds for everyone's NFL fantasy matchups every week, and he had me at two dollars eighteen this week, and it I took that personally. All right, it's an absolute. <laughs> why, is deal. Like, odds, why is he doing the odds for it? Uh, I can't oh, see. Hellas, <laughs> it's it's called it's called Hellas Bet. <laughs> But yeah, you guys do that NFL fantasy, fantasy like a fucking cult. No, it is. That's why I'm so upset and why I'm so glad his best player got injured for at least two weeks. Fair enough. <laughs> they do a bloody... Liam Wilson does a podcast every week on the NFL fantasy. Just the, really? that circulates between the five yeah, just or us. ten of them. Yeah. <laughs> yeah I, I was he gets like two or three people. I was doing it two years ago and then I just didn't pay attention to it enough and, and I just sucked. You got, you got cut, yeah. I got cut. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> Basically, that's like <laughs> it's like Will Ryan and Dan Kordeski and Lewis Olm and Elliot Olm have also been in it, and then they all got cut. How many people? And are now, in now I'm You're ten, and now I'm the laughing stock. I didn't have a bad. I didn't have a bad team, but it, my well, I didn't have the best team, but like it wasn't terrible. But I forget, kept forgetting to like change players, like guys that had buys or like they got injured and stuff. So I just had yeah. the same team every week, and then I was just getting pumped. So it was not good. We're up to we're up to year eight as well. We've actually like kept this going really? for a long time. That's yeah, it's the eighth stuff. year we've done it. That's good stuff. It's the best. It's literally like two months of research before the the NFL fantasy draft. Oh, no, it's really looks fun, to be like yeah. I'm some weirdo. Yeah, it's like, what do you do? I'm a coach. Oh yeah, for who? Oh, the fantasy team. Oh, actually, they're brothers. No, yeah, so that's, managed, that's where that's from. Yeah. I was wondering yeah. where that's from. Yes. I managed Basically. 32 fantasy teams. <laughs> Little league, fantasy league. <laughs> Great movie. It's oh, a sensational movie. What a ripper. Well, yeah, it's a good spot to wrap it up, I reckon. Yeah. Fuck yeah. All right. Thanks for that, but, Grant. I mate, appreciate it, mate. Absolute pleasure. Awesome. It's been an honor. Thank you, guys. Good luck no, with the thank basketball. You. Thank you. Good mate. luck with the uh, dodging COVID. Thank you. <laughs> and let us know when you're going to be back as well, probably next year. We'll do. Or course. whenever. Uh, Christmas time, hopefully. It's a Christmas yeah, time. We'll see what happens with borders and shit anyway. Who yeah. knows? Anyway, thanks, Grant. Thank thanks, you, mate. See you, mate. Bye. Have a good one. See ya.